listening to The Extraordinary Catholic, co-sponsored by the Catholic Education Foundation and the Station of the Cross out of Buffalo, New York. I am your host, Sean Delicato. Thank you for being with us. Today, we are privileged to welcome to the program two extraordinary Catholics, Ficta and Marilyn Carvalho. For over 15 years, retired teachers and husband and wife, Victor and Marilyn have dedicated themselves to own and operate Catholic Land, a Canadian marina, retreat, and Catholic environment for recreation, reflection, and retreat for families, parish groups, youth, choir, prayer, marriage enrichment, and more. Welcome, Victor and Marilyn. Thank you for joining us. We are privileged to have you with us today. Victor, thank you, thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure. Now, Victor and Marilyn, and um, I know uh, you both work very closely together. Can you tell our listeners just what Catholic Land is? What's it all about? Uh, the concept of Catholic Land uh, came to our came to our minds when we wanted to run something for Catholics in a way of fellowship which is a high priority with our Protestant brothers, mm-hmm. but missing in the Catholic arena. Okay. We wanted to establish something that would uh, permit or encourage families to come and be a part of a reflective and recreational group or environment and yet maintain the faith. Well, that's Use your, the faith that's... as a high priority. So our entry level was... If you're faithful to the magisterium, Mm -hmm. you're good enough to join us, and we welcome you to join us, and we wish you would join us, because we need people like you to help others, or lukewarm Catholics, to come into the fold. Wonderful. And that was the the concept behind Catholic Land. Uh, Wonderful inspiration. You said that thought came to your mind, uh, to want to do this. How did it come to your mind? How did it enter? What was the motivation? I'm sure the good Lord put it there. Okay. Um, good things don't come from me. <laughs> so None of I'm us. Sure the good Lord inspired us to do that with our time and talent. Right. And we were both teachers. We had enough money on our hands so we did not have to borrow. Okay. And we said, why not do what we need to do? Okay. And there were very many good signs that led to this concept because we lived in Toronto at that time in Pickering. Houses were selling at about 65000 mm-hmm. And we had bought the land for 360000 In fact, for 550000 Okay. And the person was prepared to give us a mortgage of 200000 We had to come up with 360000 our cash to mortgage was 360000 Right. So we prayed, and a house that was supposed to sell for 60, 65 or 80000 miraculously sold for 360000 Oh, my God. Isn't and that I couldn't believe it. I thought the person had misunderstood the whole process. Huh. But uh, very shortly, we received an offer for 400000 Huh. So I told the person, listen, if he wants to back off or if he feels uh, confused about it, wow. he said, no, I bought the place, I bought your place, I love it, and please do not do anything more than give it to me. Huh. So uh, obviously we left the place contented. Yes. They moved in contented. Wow. And we had enough to move right into a, into a situation where we had a vendor take back with no further mortgages or liabilities. Well, you had to know the Lord was directing you with that kind of money being offered for that Yes, house. certainly. I have begged of the bank manager. They wouldn't even give me 20000 oh, So, uh, And this was all done with a, uh, with a beautiful introduction to us taking that move. And we made that move. And this happened just about 10 days before closing. Wow. So I did not know, I did not have a clue as to how was I going to get that money. Huh. So we moved in. That was the first sense of the Lord is with us. Uh, we moved in, but then, I, uh, as I, said, I told you before, we moved into a situation that I thought was family. It was far from family. Yeah. It was a very confusing setup. Uh, as a result, we abandoned camp. 
we're prepared to let it all go and lose the camp and lose our assets. It turned out that we started the children's camp in, in that place, and uh, that grew. When we were off the air, you explained to me uh, what discouraged you and, and made you change venues. When we bought the trailer park, which was a family camp, uh, where our heart was, we wanted to run a place for families, Catholic families. But we soon realized that this wasn't really a family. It was a, uh, a convenience for people to come to and uh, come with whoever they wished to. Not that everybody did that. There were many good families, not necessarily Catholic. But there was an inst- uh, uh, situation there that really threw us off when a young boy, maybe 18 or younger, wanted to spend the night with his girlfriend at one of the, in one of the trailers that belonged to the parents. And I said, please, Lord, not under my roof, not, not in, on our land. So we uh, first pleaded with him that this is not proper. And in short, he told me to mind my own business and that his father owned the, play, uh, owned the trailer and he should be able to, he had the rights to go in. But fortunately, his father was not prepared to come and with, be witness to this. So in the process of time, which, uh, where we denied him entry, he took on a stand of defiance and says, no, I must be allowed to go in. So fortunately, on the contract was a statement saying that people cannot use your premises without you physically being present. It just happened to be from the old contract that we had taken on, assumed. Excellent. So we used that number, say number 23, and said, sorry, your your child cannot come in here because you're not here. Mm -hmm. Now, all that he might have had to say is, yes, I will come in and allow my child to come in. But thank God, he said, son... Come home, don't go there. Good. And we said, thank you, Lord, and we proceeded. Okay, Uh, From that moment on, we thought this is not the type of place we would like to run, so we abandoned ship, so to say, shut down the place, asked people to leave, uh, which they couldn't because we were under yearly contract, so we had to keep the place open. There was a lot of chaos. People had been there for 20 and odd years, so we begged of them to buy us out at the same price that we had bought it, giving them a wonderful deal because we were prepared to actually sponsor their um, their interests in the in the place. And having made it so sweet, I think it confused them because they did not realize that they could be getting something for almost nothing because we had the money backing the whole process up, and we would have just taken their money as rentals and converted it into a purchase. But thank God they chose not to go that route. Mm. Uh, And that ironically uh, created an exodus. I actually wanted to video it. It was as parallel to the Ten Commandments exodus that you see of the Jews leaving Egypt. People wow. were taking every conceivable thing, wow. loading it up onto trailers and trucks and moving it out from even plants that they put into the field. I said, thank you, fellas, take whatever you want and leave. So the end product was in October somewhere, everybody left, and a park that was full became empty. Wow. And we just emptied ourselves and said, Lord, you take care of it from here on. We did not know what to do at that point. Our children were between the ages of uh, 1 and uh, what, 11, 12, mm-hmm. and we said, we don't know what to do. Yeah. But fortunately, we started a children's camp by starting a birthday party, bringing children in, and children came in with parents, and this, and what a wonderful mm-hmm. place to have children come to. Yeah. And so the next year, we developed a better system. We approached the GTA, the Toronto Catholic school system, the York, Durham, all the regions around us, and they all consented to having our program run through them, and very rapidly, we grew very rapidly to, um, to I think, the only Catholic camp that ran in Ontario at that level. In case you have just joined us, this is The Extraordinary Catholic. 
and we are talking with husband and wife, owners of Catholic Land, Victor and Marilyn Carvalho. Now, Victor, before we go down that road a bit, uh, Marilyn, how did you feel with all the chaos going on uh, with your original purchase? Well, we weren't really happy with what was going on in the environment. It was so secular mm. that it really, you know, we were at our wit's end. So in a way, it was a godsend that this happened. Um, I was nervous because we had, you know, five, five young children and a family to run. Uh, and we, you know, had to, once everybody left, it was just uh, no income coming in. But somehow, you know, we had our, our uh, tragic cards or whatever the, uh, you know, cards to use, and we were able to survive. Um, our income was about 100000 and then we went down to, like, nothing. But uh, we had a lot of faith, and, you know, God is in charge of our lives, and we just put our trust in him and ask God to lead us. And I guess uh, he inspired us to go. And being school teachers, I think it was a lot easier for us to conceive of running a a summer camp for children. Okay. And, you know, it it grew from there. Well, God bless you. Okay, so tell us about now the camp and how it worked and everything. Uh, Well, we had our flyers that went out to the schools. And then, you know, the children came, and we were very interested in trying to uh, teach them uh, the Catholic faith, because we find even in the schools sometimes, you know, in the Catholic schools, the children were not really receiving a a good education on the basic uh, fundamentals of our faith. So we started uh, having, uh, you know, having making sure that the counselors were good Catholic children and who knew their faith. And then, uh, you know, we set up a program where they were able to teach the children the faith and in a fun way. And then at the end, we'd have uh, a game called Test Your Faith, uh, where we divided them up into groups and uh, some, something like the, um, you know, the game shows they have on TV. Sure, yeah. And uh, it was very good. And then we had, you know, uh, gave them uh, incentives and gave them uh, little uh, things that they received, prizes for winning. And uh, then we also started later on something called Movies with Morals, where the children actually, uh, you know, sat down as as a group and planned um, the movie that they wanted to run based on on Bible stories. Wow. And uh, they wrote up the script and everything, and uh, these were then filmed by our children, made into uh, videos or CDs, uh, which the children took home at the end of the week. So they made the movies themselves? Yes, yes. Oh, wow. the, the counselor, the staff did that, and uh, then they got them ready, and then as the children left, they were uh, given the, the movies to take home with them. What a great but idea. They, they were really nicely done, you know, just... Uh, uh, we ended up with uh, Jonah, which was a musical, which my son uh, was able to to produce and write. Uh, we used our swimming pool as the as the as the the river. The river <laughs> it worked out really well. Yeah. What did you use for the ark? Mm-hmm. We had a boat, so we were use, able to use that for the ark. Oh, terrific! That's great. Yeah. That's great. And for, uh, as well as the boat that uh, Jonah was thrown out of. <laughs> That's great. The camp filled up pretty quickly? Uh, yes, it did. Yes. Well, we had, in fact, uh, unfortunately, as Victor said, we had to move on. A lot of parents, you know, kept calling us and saying, are you running the camp this year? And we said, no, you know, we've decided now to move on. And uh, unfortunately, we uh, changed direction. But I think we're looking forward now with excitement to, this, to our new venture that we've started. Victor, tell us about the new venture then. So the new venture is basically dealing with families rather than with children. Uh, running a camp in, for children brings about a different set of rules than running it for families. So we thought by running it for families, we do not need to have counselors. More so, we need to have parents coming in with their children and looking, being responsible for their own children, whilst the children can uh, can come together, play volleyball, basketball, the whole slew of things. We even thought of putting in a swimming pool eventually, right in the water, huh. um, right in the lagoon. We we have about an one acre 
plus of lagoon water that we own oh, wow. in the marina. Yeah. And so besides the river, we have our own water body. Okay. So we can more or less do, we are quite free to do what we want with it to, to quite a great extent. Uh, either harbor boats or houseboats or platforms or whatever else. So we thought we would create an environment of, of excitement on the water mm-hmm. and around the water and yet keep a reflective element to it, right. yet challenge each other to grow in faith mm-hmm. uh, by having talks, by having discussions, by showing, having videos, by promoting uh, Catholic themes and people. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I hate to use Scott Hahn because he seems to be the Cadillac. <laughs> I do not want to bring him down to our level, but we would like to be raised to his level. We would like to have something like Scott Hahn wanting to come here at a certain point. Okay. And if that happens, I think we have achieved. Okay. But so for the moment, if uh, the little Scots come here, I'll be happy. <laughs> you know, uh, just to set up, set up the momentum, and grow as the Lord permits. Well, Victor, have you have you ever picked up the phone and called Scott? I'd be too nervous to. No, I I think he would be very receptive to your phone call. In fact, uh, we could talk about that later off the air, but uh, yeah. I, I think he would be very, very receptive to, to your phone call. Yeah, and you know, uh, also the, the logistics over here at this point, at this very point now, is not a readiness as yet. Okay. So I think within, uh, say, a period of 18 months, uh, things could change. If something like your radio station, this radio interview, should uh, ignite a, a certain spark of Americans and Canadians coming to, I find Americans more uh, challenged and enthusiastic about taking the lead mm-hmm. than, uh, unfortunately, can change this in Canada than our, our <laughs> little Canadians here. I think they're more laid back, more at peace with themselves. Uh, I think it, it takes on... Uh, you know, a gust of people coming in saying, listen, Victor, we want to make this succeed. Like yes. what's happened to Catholic Family Land yes. in uh, Ohio. I presume you know the place I'm talking about. Yes, I do. Yeah. Um, I like what uh, Jerry Conica and his wife brought about. Mm-hmm. We've met with the people ourselves. Uh, he indicated to me, he said, uh, Jerry said to me and to my wife, he said, Victor, I think we need you in Canada Stay there, stay put, and do the best you can. Okay. Uh, So with that encouragement that was said to me about maybe 10 years ago, with that encouragement, we sort of kept going, thinking that who else will fill it, I don't know. Our space at this point, I don't know, so we'll just keep going. But I'm hoping that more than money, we need people backing us up with enthusiasm, coming in, spending a day and work with us. I've got about six guys right now, as I talk to you, outside building docks oh, wow. uh, for the love of what we are doing. Okay. Uh, although we're paying them, they're still here for the love of what they're doing. Right. Uh, just to give you an idea, they would generally earn something like $35 an hour. They're earning something like $15 an hour at our place. Uh, so that really shows uh, a great desire to support us. Yes. And these are Macedonian Catholics, oh. not even uh, Roman Catholics. Right. So I'm hoping that people will come out of the woodworks before it's all too late, you know. Uh, God will call us on judges by our, our desire and our, the steps we have taken, regardless of our success. Right. So we are still plugging along, hoping that somewhere down the road somebody will say, listen, we stand behind you and the will Now, can, uh, can you both share some examples of how Catholic land, both the, the youth groups and the adults, has affected the lives of some people who have visited you? Uh, certainly our little kid, our little, little one, our youngest son, has now joined the priesthood. Who knows how it did affect his life? Sure. Um, my other three children, older than uh, older to him, are to me. Although I always demand more, 
are excellent little kids. Right. And I'm sure uh, Catholic land itself has affected my own family. Uh, I've kept away from mischief myself. Who knows where would I have been? <laughs> so um, I, I think this very presence of trying to evangelize others right. uh, has made us point to ourselves. Yes. And uh, do the best we can, although we are far from perfect. We say the rosary every day. Right. And I say the only say, the reason I say it is to tell the Lord 53 times that I'm a sinner. Uh. So... Amen. In case you have just joined us, this is The Extraordinary Catholic, and we are talking with husband and wife, owners of Catholic Land, Victor and Marilyn Carvalho. Any any other examples of people not your family that you can point to? Many, many, many people. Many people have been touched. I'm, I'm supposing that if this goes onto the air and is and is uh, heard by Canadians, you'll get a lot of people I'm sure, calling in and saying, you know, my son was so excited after he'd gone there that this is how, this is what he related. Okay. Uh, we have had children of all sorts come there and be touched by the Lord. And the most comical thing almost was uh, towards the end we started getting, being open to the CAS, the uh, Catholic Children's so, um, Aid Society. Okay. Uh, they suddenly got wind of us, knowledge of us, and started sending their kids there. And some were not even Catholic and would shout and sing the hymns louder and stronger and with more enthusiasm than our own Catholic little children. Oh. And I used to find that the most comical of all. The praise and worship sessions took on a, a separate, uh, a different tone um, with our children and their children uh, being enthused about uh, singing praises to God, you know. Um, and we prayed the rosary every day at camp. I hate to mention names, but we have had many, many people. I just met with a friend of a friend yesterday who, had, who was a counselor at camp, uh, Carissa, and they said, what a wonderful girl she is, and I'm sure it's not because of us, but it's also because of us. Um, there's another girl that uh, is from the States, in fact, from, what's the name? Oregon. She is, she's become a family friend ever since she served at our camp. Her name is Kate. Okay. Um, she just loves us as much as uh, we can imagine. He almost calling us adopted uh, parents. So uh, things like that have gone from one extreme to the other in different ways. People have come. We had a no smoke, no drink policy at our camp, more because of the children then. Mm -hmm. And people would grumble, stand out on the road and smoke and drink. Mm -hmm. But I'd have had people coming to me later and saying, thank you very much for the stand you took. Oh. Uh, I've given up smoking. Uh, I, I used to find smoking the most offensive because of the secondhand smoke. At that time, nobody even thought of it. Uh, so people would come back to us and thank us for stands that we've taken. God bless you both. And would you uh, share your website? Uh, 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 yes, our website, um, it's, uh, it's quite an incident. If you don't mind me, in, in 30 seconds I could tell you something about it. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Yep. When we changed from Catholic land, where we had 40 acres, to our marina, which is all water, we said we can't call it Catholic land anymore, although we picked up 75 acres of land very close by to our place, so we could still call it Catholic land. But Catholic land was a catchy word, as a term that we used so long, that we were looking out for a new word for our marina. And, and the three people that gave it to me was one, a friend, a close friend of ours, two, a priest, and th three, a bishop. And when all said the same words, I was rather stunned. The, the words were Stella Maris Marina. Huh. And I couldn't believe it when these three confirmed it, one a friend, Sorry. one a priest, and one a bishop. And huh. nobody else ever presented a, a name for us. So we called it Stella Maris Marina dot com, hyphenated word. But we thought we would let Catholic Land lead them to Stella Maris Marina, nonetheless. Okay. So if your listeners, if they just looked up CatholicLand.com, 
Right. They'll come to us, and they want to go the other approach. They could go Stella hyphen Morris hyphen Marina mm-hmm. dot com, okay. and they'll come to the same website. Okay. Oh, and Google Catholic Land. Anybody who Google's Catholic Land because it's been in existence for almost twenty years plus, they will sort of connect with us quite easily. Well, incidentally, uh, I I live in Rochester, New York, and uh, the Catholic camp is called Stella Maris in Rochester, New York. Oh, there's so. a Catholic camp called Stella Maris. Stella Maris, that's, right. yeah, so. <laughs> that's wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. I hope that same group can come up here and enjoy the place that's well, built for them, perhaps. Well, maybe we could begin to build a bridge. Victor and Marilyn, I understand you have a very interesting telephone number. Can you tell us about that? Yes, we do. Um, we chose to have it in the sign of the cross. So anybody phoning us would be blessing us and blessing themselves. Oh. Um, it's the 2046 ah. number. Okay. And uh, whilst we ran Catholic land, we had the CL turned into a fish, <laughs> the C and the L. That was our logo. We are very, very proud of our logo. That's phenomenal. Um, and now we bought a marina, so we're combining the fish with the sign of the cross. <laughs> Uh, you, you think of everything. And just to, to close on this, the, the name of the radio station that we're broadcasting from is called the Station of the Cross. The Station of the Cross. The Station of the Cross. <laughs> so with, so with that, we are all from the same good Lord. You know what, Victor? That's, that's a perfect segue uh, because we want to thank both you and Marilyn. Thank you so much not only for joining us, but for the wonderful work you do and the inspiration and encouragement you give to all of us to go out into the deep and take a chance on our faith in the Lord. Thank you for being with us for today's Extraordinary Catholic. We hope you have found the program inspirational and informative, and truly hope you can join us again. I am John Delicato.